Are you surprised that he is now in this position? Well, I, I can honestly say I'm not surprised. I, I wasn't sure that he was going to win up until a few weeks ago, but I knew that he would make a, a huge splash. Uh, and, and the reason really is, is that the issue that he's tackling, the growth of inequality, uh, the distribution of money from the bulk of the population to the very rich, is true. And people feel it. And when somebody says it, they, they re resonate to that. Mm. And I, but I suppose it's one thing in New Hampshire, you know, he's from the neighbouring state, Vermont. Uh, from now, though, it's a rather different game, isn't it? I mean, in terms of who he would need to win over, and that is going to be uh, possible or impossible? Well, it's entirely possible. The business about him being from the neighbouring state is, is really just a Hillary Clinton spin. Uh, New Hampshire and Vermont are next to each other, but they define each other in terms of not being like the other. So they're not great friends. And when he started uh, the campaign, uh, when Vermont was no further away from uh, New Hampshire than it is now, he was 40% behind. No, he didn't win it because he lives next door. He won it because mm. the people of the state uh, approved what he was saying. Uh, and Sorry, go on. No, no forgive me, but there, there was another argument that is put forward that actually he's too far to the left to win the country. You know, he could maybe, perhaps he could win the nomination, but when it comes to actually taking the presidency, he's in danger of, of losing it to the Republicans and setting progressives back decades. Well, there's, there's no evidence of that at all. In fact, what I think he'll have difficult, it'll be a difficult campaign winning the uh, the nomination, but uh, against the Republicans, it would not be very difficult, because they've they've been a party of of a kind of conservatism of saying small state, do away with the benefits, do away with the, uh, all the things that help people get on in life. And when uh, when you have somebody as vigorous as Bernard saying, "Look, that's you, that's your your parents, that, whose uh, social security pen, uh, you know, pension you're talking about," they will be whipped. It's just the problem has been that you've had this centrist uh, monotony for so long uh, that that they've gotten away with murder, but they won't get away with it with Bernard. He, he'll now, Mr. Trump, who's the most obnoxious of the of the Republicans, is, is a different story because he has been, I think, probably fallaciously also talking about the uh, inequality and what he would do about it. But what he would do mm -hmm. about it is uh, is persecute uh, Mexicans and and Muslims, and what Bernard would do about it is to create a, a better society. Okay, how would he do that? Let you imagine your brother walking into the White House. What, yes. are, what, is, what are the first things that he tries to do? Well, the first thing he's got, what he has said is that he can't do anything on his own. He, there needs to be a movement. Uh, he calls it a political revolution. I think in our terms, it's more like you, you would say civil rights movement, a women's movement, a huge development that comes from below and that demands change and that's what he will work on from the first day. He will not settle into the Oval Office or whatever. He will be on the, on television. He will be traveling the country. And he will be talking mm -hmm. to the people who have put him there and telling them if they want to get what he's talking about, they're going to have to work with him. And just briefly, in our terms, should we think of him like Jeremy Corbyn? He's, there, is, there are similarities. Jer Jeremy Corbyn's anti-austerity, and I might say the Green Party's policies, Right. Uh, are in the same direction, and they speak to the same issues. Black. Britain is not quite as uh, unequal as America, but it's pretty bad.